Um, so I was wondering, I was wondering about uh, your freshman year at St. Louis and then your freshman uh, season at Alabama. How do you think those moments uh, prepared you where, you know, where you weren't the guy so that you're able to handle moments like Denver, like Las Vegas, and even earlier in the season where you take a back seat that, you know, you were mature enough mentally to, to be able to handle that? Well, I think there just needs to be understanding, like situational understanding what we're trying to get done as a team. Um, you know, and then just from that perspective, like you just got to get out of yourself and kind of, like I said, into the team and see it from that perspective instead of, um, you know, yourself. So I would say my freshman year, you know, I, I played junior varsity um, because in our league, you couldn't play, you know, varsity right away. Um, but just it, it's it's all about, you know, what you can gain from everything. And for me, it's it's learning experience, you know, and like I said, you know, in all of the previous um, interviews that I've had, it's it's not like a one and done thing. You know, it's just it's continuous, especially doing, you know, you know your rookie year, too. So. Al. To uh, I, I suppose uh, following up in a way in the previous question. I wanted to ask you about the pressure you may or may not be feeling this week, given the stakes, given how last Saturday went, um, any extra pressure that you feel on your shoulders to pull out this victory and show that the Dolphins made the right choice? I'd say for me, there's, there's really, you know, no extra added pressure for me. Um, I would say the expectation for myself is very high in, you know, how I perform and how I go out there and try to lead the guys to victory. Obviously, you know, this past weekend, you know, I, I didn't play to that standard. And, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's more so like me knowing that, you know, we, we got to go out there and, you know, got to get the job done. And if you can't get the job done, then, you know, that's, that's on you. That's on no one else. Steve? Two of uh, 16 weeks into your rookie season, uh, when do you most still feel like a rookie at this point? Man, I, I, I'm not too sure how to answer that question. I just think it's, it's a continuing learning process, whether you're a rookie or second year, third year. There's always things that you can learn, um, but it's how quickly you can digest those things and, and then, you know, kind of go out there and execute them. So that, that's the biggest thing for me. Adam? Uh, two, I, I have two questions, if I may. The one, first one's pretty easy. Have you ever played in snow before? And what was that experience like? Is there, there could be some snow on Sunday. And, and two, uh, going back to your college days, you've obviously had big time performances on the biggest stage. Can you draw on that experience? And what specifically from national championship games can prepare you for a weekend like this? Yeah, first to your first question, I've never played in snow. Um, and then to your second question, I, I, I think at the end of the day, it just comes down to our 11 guys against their 11 guys. It, it's, it's football, you know, and this time it's a lot different because there's no fans, um, you know, but you do know that there's, there's a lot at stake. Um, and, you know, it, it goes back to like what I said before, you gotta, you gotta go out there and perform. Um, and this is crunch time, and yeah, you you just you, now's not the time to, you know, to be making mistakes and, and all of these things. You you gotta really zero in on uh, what you gotta do to help the team become successful and get a win. Cam, hey Tua, um, I was thinking about when you just mentioned that. I was thinking, have you ever seen snow? You've lived in Hawaii, Bama, and. In Miami, have you seen snow? That's not my question, but I was curious about that. Um, my actual question is, um, I'd say I'd say how the QB situation has kind of worked out this year has been unorthodox, maybe is the right word. But what is it about how maybe Flo has handled it that makes you and Fitz both comfortable, you know, with whatever happens? Yeah, I, I've I've seen snow. I've I've got to play with snow a little bit. Um, that was in Alabama my freshman year. It was snowing there. They said it snows like every four years there. So I was lucky. 
And then, um, you know, with, with that whole, with, well, like with our whole quarterback situation, I think Flo does a good job in, in communicating with, you know, me fits um, as well as our coordinator and our quarterbacks coach, you know, and kind of seeing like, Hey, are you in a groove or, you know, what can we do better? And if not, you know, it's, it's all, it's always communicated. There's really good communication between all of us. And, you know, I, I, I trust that he has, you know, the interest, not just for us, but um, just in, in the whole team. He has the best interest for the whole team. That's what I should say. No. Omar? So uh, I have a question about RPO. I'm still learning about RPO. You, you're, you've played in it for quite a while right now. Um, because you have to get the ball out your hands so quickly, to uh, prevent offensive linemen from being uh, illegal downfield players, how do you produce big plays in RPO? Well, how how does how does that happen if it has to be s- such a quick progression? You get the ball in the hands of our playmakers and you let them make plays. I would say that's how that's how you do it. Um, that's one way, and then you know other ways are are also just pushing the ball downfield. And I would say that's that's what I need to do, you know, a better job with, especially, you know, this past game and then games prior. All right, we have one more question. We'll go to Jeff. Hey, Tua, I'm really looking forward to the college football playoff. I'm, I'm wondering, could you give me a little thumbnail on Devontae Smith and, and how do you think Alabama will do? Yeah, Devontae Smith, he, he's a really good player. Um, got to play with him from my freshman year um, until last year. So played with him for three years. Very smart, very instinctive. Um, and he's very athletic. And he's fast, too. And he, he goes up and gets the ball. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not no magician or I'm not Houdini. You know, I'm, I don't have a crystal ball to <laughs> say who's going to win this game and whatnot. But um you, know, you just wish the best to our guys um, at Alabama. And, you know, Notre Dame's going to be tough, too. You just can never be too sure um, now when it comes to football. So, Hey, Big, how's it going, man? Good, how are you? Good, good. I was wondering, what's it like having Byron Jones as a teammate? What kind of energy does he bring, uh, you know, in the locker room and then also on the field? Uh, Grace, he's a quiet guy, really. He's a quiet guy. He just stay to himself and he do what he have to do on the field. Uh, he's smart. Um, but for me, he's, he's real quiet. One more. Uh, Bake, want to ask you about uh, the lessons that you learned from the first time that you guys played Buffalo. And I know this isn't your first time, Josh Allen. What do you take from that game earlier this season that you, will help you guys pull out the victory this week? Uh so as a team or just me personally? Both. All right. Um, as me personally, uh, for me, it was just, you know, my eyes. They, they throw a lot of different um, eye candy. And uh, just me personally, I have to just make sure my eyes are right. My eyes are right. Everything goes to fall in line. As a team, uh, we're, we're a completely different team, honestly. Uh, you know, we played them uh, week two, right? Week two. It, we're just a completely different team, and uh, you know, we, we have different things we want to try differently. But also, we just have to play together as a team, and that's all three phases. Um, so, yeah, that's why I, I guess that's what I got to say. Joe. Hey, Big, good to see you. Uh, earlier today, Coach Flo was telling us that uh, Kurt Kuntz leads uh, third down meetings, third down defense. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, go ahead. Bo was telling us that Kirk Kuntz leads third down defense meetings. Uh, and obviously he was an Ohio high school football coach. I'm wondering if you knew of him, how he's made the transition from high school to the NFL and 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 what you think his strengths are. Oh yeah, Kirk. Uh, he's very detailed. I say that. He's very detailed. Uh, he tried to get every single thing they did on third down, but uh, yeah, he, I guess you could say he transitioned well, and uh, he's definitely been helping us, you know, doing his part when it comes down to third down. So, um, yeah, I think he transitioned well, and he's doing, he's doing fine. 
Barry? Hi, Jerome. Was curious why you thought you're getting to the quarterback with more frequency this year. Seven sacks, is that more opportunities? Do you think you've improved your pass rush skills as far as moves? Uh, I say it's more credit to our D-line. Um, you know, just having Agra, having Shaq, having, having Kyle, uh, the offense have to, you know, gear towards blocking them first. And it just helped me with more opportunities. And, uh, but I say it's definitely D-line. You know, those guys, they take up sometimes two, three guys. And for me, it's usually one-on-one -on -one battle where it's sometimes I'm just free. So I, I definitely give it all credit to the D-line. Cam? Hey, what's up, man? Um, from from week one, 2019, when you guys first played your first game under Flo to now, what do you think is the biggest thing that you guys evolved as as a team and maybe him as a coach um, over that period? Uh, I think we just finally uh, – we're playing together and we learned how to win. Uh, what I mean about that is uh, you know, we, were, we were in some tight games and some close games, but you – certain play, certain few plays you have to just – execute and do your job and that's how you win the game. I think last year uh, we, we didn't do a great job of doing that. And this year I think we do a, a better job of just uh, really just knowing how to win and knowing the situation and what we're supposed to do, how to win. What are you supposed to do to so make sure we win and uh, it's just the credit to flow. You know, he's been preaching that you know, since he's been here and uh, it's definitely working out for us. Josh. Hey, Big, just as a follow-up earlier to my question about Byron. So he's a quiet guy, but, um, you know, he's got a lot of experience under his belt. He's been to playoffs a couple of times. Um, what's more so that like, knowing that he has experience and you get to line up with him, and, um, you know, uh, you know, especially such a critical game up upcoming? Uh, so, yeah, he, he's very detailed. So what I mean by that is, like, every little play, every little assignment, it matters. Um, and it's not just him, you know, all the older guys we have that, you know, play in the playoffs, they, they know that and they stress that. Uh, I think Byron, he, he does a great job of, you know, when it comes to the secondary of uh, making sure those guys know that. And, uh, you know, Kyle in our room, he makes sure we all know that even the little plays matter, you know, when it's, you know, big games like pretty much for the rest of the year. Um, so, yeah, that's what, that's what he does a great job in. We definitely need that. Adam? Hey, Big. Um, I don't think you've ever won in Buffalo. Uh, I think the two trips up there have been uh, going the other way. Is that correct? I don't know. You're probably right. Is there a, do you, do you, is there a common thread between, uh, you know, when, when you go up against those guys and come up on the wrong end of the, the result? Is it a common what? Is there a common thread between, uh, you know, going up there and, and, and coming home with a loss? Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's this. It's, it's some about them. I mean, for them, they they have uh, a unique offense. They have a just a unique way of how they do things. And uh, we just throw in. I know they don't have fans now, but you just throw in going up there. Uh, the fans, uh, you know how they play the game. Yeah, I guess we just didn't come out with a win in my three years, but. Hopefully that, that changes. Omar? Now you got me curious, Peg. What what makes their offense so unique? I know they've got uh, weapons all over the field, but what, what makes it unique? Um. So, yeah. So, just having – it all starts with Josh Allen. He, he's their uh, their guy. That's, and he does a great job just leading them. Uh, but it, it's, it's harder because you can't just pass rush and go wildly out of control because – he can scramble out. He has the arm talent to not only uh, make the, the throws down the field, but he can also use his legs. Now we throw in digs, and you throw all the weapons they have, uh, they give you a real challenge. And I think this year, you just look at their offense, they, they've they been you know, rolling. So uh, it's definitely going to be a good challenge for us. Yeah. Hey, Bake, I'm sh I don't know if you had individual goals or team goals coming into the year, but you guys are – number one in scoring defense, is that significant? And, and what, what sort of does that mean, if it is? Uh, yeah, it's definitely significant. We, we definitely had, you know, goals as defense. Um, batted balls, interceptions, 
Uh, I forgot the other two. Sacks. There's one more. But, yeah, we definitely had team goals, and uh, I don't know the exact numbers of how we met up to them, but we kept those goals. We kept those, you know, those pillars of what we had, and, uh, you know, just having a number one, whatever it was, is just a testament of, you know, we do what we're supposed to do. We can, you know, be one of the best defense in the league, and uh, it's definitely been a fun year. Uh, there's one more question, Safed. Hey, Bake. Um, obviously, when when Coach Flo got here, the first couple games were were not pretty at all. And now you guys are sitting one game away from from making the playoffs. Just just how unfathom fathomable is that, and 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 how realistic is it, you know, for you guys to be able to go into Buffalo and 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 get your goal of you know reaching the playoff this year? Oh, uh, it's very realistic. That's that's one thing. Uh, and it's a credit to Coach Flo. You know, since the day he came here, uh, he stressed main points of what he needed this team to be and what this team needs to do. And, uh, and that's what we did. We followed his lead, and uh, it's definitely working out for us. I think this Sunday is just we got to put it all together. We have to play together as a team. And, uh, you know, we win this game. You know, the rest is what we make out of it. So uh, we're definitely excited. We're definitely ready to go. And it's going to be a fun one Sunday. Hey, Ted, how are you? Good. How are you doing, Adam? Good. I'm trying to turn my video on, but I guess you'll just not get to see my face. <laughs> um, to, uh, a question for you. you. You you've made some trips to Buffalo over the years. Uh, what is your most favorite thing about playing there, and what is your least favorite thing about playing there? Well, I think you know it, the fans are two sided with that. You know they have great fans up there, and the, the drive in's always pretty entertaining with you know what they got going on in the parking lot, but. You know, it is it is nice with no fans up there because they do make a very it, – it's a loud stadium. Um, I, is it still called New Era or this year? I don't think it is. But great stadium, um, going to be a big matchup, division opponent, week 17 with a lot of implications. We're excited, ready to roll. Barry? Ted, most serious Dolphins fans could tell you the four scenarios where the Dolphins could make the playoffs, the most obvious one of which is you guys winning and you're in. I'm curious, do players ever talk about scenarios of how a team could get in postseason if they don't win? Has that come up at all in any conversations? Are you even aware of the other three scenarios? Um, I'm aware that if we don't win, we'll need some help. But, you know, the main thing that I'm, you know, focusing on is going up there and, and – and kind of kicking the door in on playoffs ourselves. So, you know, we're going up there in a huge game, a play-in game, really. And, uh, you know, we're going to need our player best Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. Dolphin? Hey, Ted, I wanted to ask you just that game. It didn't seem to uh, – the Raiders game didn't seem to really go that well for you guys up until the final seconds. What was that emotion like for you um, and, and for some of your teammates uh, before the, the, the throw from Fitz happened and then – kind of afterwards, now that you have a meaningful game to play now next week? Well, I mean, it was a huge win. Uh, you know, never really been a part of a play like that. Obviously, unbelievable finish. Um, uh, we did enough to win. Obviously, there's some things we would have liked to do better, you know, in the, in the previous – before the big play. But we are in a position to win and, and made the play when it counted the most. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of everyone for how they're fighting and staying alive. And now we have a huge – Week 17 uh, matchup here that'll, you know, you know, hopefully we can you know, prove our worth. Hey, Ted, good afternoon, man. I was looking at some of the Bills' um, pass rush statistics, and they get plenty of production from linebackers coming after the quarterback. I was curious how that kind of changes or how, how you can best get blocked um, a, a team that pass rush is using so much linebacker uh, blitzing and stuff like that. Yeah, they got great linebackers. Edmonds, Milano, Klein, um, you know, they bring – they bring those guys a lot. They're good pass rushers, um, you know, accomplished pass rushers more so than a lot of linebacking cores. And, you know, we're going to have to set these guys, um, you know, with good technique and fundamentals and, and get our hands on them and, uh, you know, finish blocks. Adam. Yeah, Ted, after two his first start, I'm sure you remember the, 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 the camera caught you having a few, uh, you know, words of encouragement for him. I was wondering if after uh, Saturday's game, if you had anything, any message for him. Yeah, checked in on him. You know, he's he's a tough kid, man. Mentally tough, physically tough. You know, he's, he's out here preparing, ready to win. Um, you know, we're past all that stuff now. You know, a great a great victory out in the desert, but now it's time to go up to, a, you know, a, a cold environment and, and, and win a football game with a lot of a lot of stakes on the line. 
Ted, offensively, you guys have gone through kind of the works here, quarterback change, O-line injuries, guys in and out, wide receivers being out, Mike being out and coming back. How, how have you guys kind of dealt with all of that this season? I'm going to let this machine pass real quick so you can hear me. Um, well, you know, that's the league, man. And, that you know, that's week 17 of an NFL season. And, um, you know, guys are in and out. Guys get banged up, and, you know, hopefully we'll get some guys back. But, you know, everyone's got to step up. We have a lot of guys who've taken a lot of reps. Um, you know, we have a pretty pretty deep, talented O-line. I'm glad to be a part of it and, and have fun, you know, coming to work with these guys every day. But, you know, we're coming in. we got a good game plan ready to go. Had a good start to practice uh, this week. And, and uh, you know, tomorrow we'll, we'll build on it. And if I have one more question, we'll go to Cam. Hey, Ted, I guess just piggybacking off what Safed asked, the way you guys have done your quarterbacks this year, is, it's been unusual, I guess, would be maybe the right word. But you guys seem to, haven't seemed to be phased by it as an offense. What What's sort of the key to not letting such an important position change impact, you know, how you do your job or how everybody else does their job? Well, I, you know, as an O-lineman, I have an assignment and I got a job to do blocking a guy. So, you know, whoever's giving the orders um, and calling the plays, um, you know, obviously, you know, very much matters in this sport. But, you know, to me, it doesn't really affect my my playing and play out strategy. So, you know, we've taken it a play at a time and a day at a time. And I think both guys have done a great job. You know, we have a lot of great people on this offense and on this team. And, you know, the, the, the culture certainly helps us to, uh, you know, be able to transition smoothly and, and get get wins when we need to get it done.